Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to. So far, what would you describe as the biggest mistake that you have made since mounting the throne of your forefathers? I can't think of any mistake. To be honest with you, I can't. I can't think of any mistake. What I do, you know, like I told you, my kingship was ordained by God. I didn't. I didn't make myself king. I didn't want to be king. But this is the calling that God had for me. This is my divine calling. And so, ever since I became king, and after passing through the traditional isolation period, I became a French me. And as I tell people who are close to me, it's like you take a computer, you flash it, that's you raise the memory, and then you reinstall. That's what happened to me in the course of being in that isolation. Everything that I had in my head, more or less, that I didn't need was erased, and new things were put there. So I came out feeling different i came out knowing that i as a person could talk to god i understood what my duties were and i always consulted god and when i say i'm consulting god i don't mean i have to go into a church or go into a mosque or into a shrine i consult god on my own and everybody has the opportunity to do that because i have a hundred percent conviction that god is the king of kings so i'm not on the throne representing myself i'm representing the interest of god and so before i take any action i like to think just like your rotary club is it fair to all concerned we need to build goodwill and better friendship and so on exactly what we need to know in the world and that's what i do and i try to make amends and you know the big part of the challenges i had was having to arbitrate in the midst of people because in the community they always fight over land and so just like people go to the high court we have courts in the palace you know where the chief justice before so every two two weeks in my place tuesday we hold court and i speak and then educate on people's cases how did i get around this people come to the to to the courts to come and tell lies so somebody claims oh, my father is owner of this land another person says, how do you know the truth so god gave me the insight i set up a council of elders and in my case one of the oldest the oldest woman in Erimo is 118 years old she's a member and the head of that council and everybody who is 90 years and above is in the council and i brought them into the elemo in council to sit with the chiefs so when there's a case and the chiefs are trying to be funny or they are not sure there are people who know the story a to z and so we say something yoruba and they say omodegmo agbagbo lafidale ife that is the wisdom from the young the wisdom from the old is what used to to make a community great so that's what i've done and it made my job easy all i needed to do was make pronouncement after the matter has been brought and you know i keep saying something which sounds like a joke people go to the court they pick the bible they swear by the bible they pick the quran they swear by the quran but the lawyer the client and everybody they are telling lies but can they do that if they were to swear by any of the traditional uh, gods they wouldn't dare that so hardly would you see somebody walk into the palace and then make a note and then tell lies most times they would like to say the truth because it has consequences what is your day usually like in the palace when do you wake up what do you do How, you know your, your your day a typical day in the life of uh kbc his royal majesty uh, dr michael <laughs> that's a day where there are no crises you know i do up in lagos lagos is bojoji as they say in yoruba so most times i'm awake before 6 a.m i'm never asleep by 6 a.m i have been unable to get over that so i'm awake by 6 a.m of course i make divination and pray that's if there are no crises and i do once once i do that i try to remember what we need to do what has happened previous night most times something will interrupt all that some issues will come up I need to quickly give it attention sometimes i do not get an opportunity to eat till late in the night all day because the moment i get into attending to issues it's difficult for me to walk out of the palace chamber and then go on to that but on a good day i then get an opportunity to have my bath you know and uh, get myself ready for the day possibly it's something light for breakfast and then i'm out and i begin to respond the chiefs will come there are various categories of chiefs there are high chiefs those are the king makers they have regular meetings with me there are other chiefs male and female then we have the head of each of the communities that are resident in our town like Nibos, they have a head 
we call them alakosu we have the oyos we have the igedis we have the domas you know different communities i also meet with them and then we also have mayors each area each part of the town has a head and they call them oluriomo so there's oluriomo idini oluriomo uh, udoja oluriomo okiodi and so on and then these are the young middle-aged people that look into the community so i need to meet with all of them all the time for me to know how things are and get a first-hand briefing of the situation and what we are there sometimes there are functions to attend either with the government or either within the community or there are things to inspect there are projects going on that i need to go and look at and then before i know it, the day is gone sometimes like i said the moment i get into it because i can't eat in the presence of these people i i probably won't end up eating all day so i'm able to come in, come back inside and this is what really upsets my immediate family wondering why i'm uh, trashing my health that way so what kind of food does kagesi enjoy eating most well i'm a typical yoruba man but i'm also a typical uh, cosmopolitan man so i i eat all the various uh, traditional yoruba food i eat eba i don't eat eba that much let me not say eba but you know i'm in jesha pandelyam is our number one food staple food and so even though i wasn't really keen about pandelyam before i'm compelled to eat because when we do new yam festival i must eat the pandelyam by force when we do other festival it's pandelyam when there's any issue going on it's pandelyam and incidentally if you come to any more and you are a visitor and they so prepare rice for these people prepare pandered yam the pandered yam will be ready long before the rice is ready because everybody knows how to do that it's easier to come about than the regular rice but in my community too we are known as very good rice farmers and unfortunately my people before i became king they said some witches were turning to beds and they are the one eating they are sick and so they decided to go off rice farming so i'm only now convincing them to take it back by letting them understand that wherever there are seeds, then we always come there, you know, but there was this big superstition. So yes, I eat uh, every traditional Nigerian food, but I've been to all parts of Nigeria. So I eat uh, Dikaipo, I eat uh, Ufe Nsala, I eat uh, Oha, all, I, I eat almost everything, you know, <laughs> when I get a chance to eat.